Hello everybody, my name is Aaron aka Pulling Teeth and welcome back finally to PTW. It's been a whole week, we've missed a week. Uh, so you know I've been moving house so it's been a bit of an issue to get recording but I think I'm going to be back somewhat sporadically now. But either way, here we go, the first match back here in PTW. We've got a freeway contest between Trish Stratus, Rosemary and Lara Croft. The winner will be getting a PTW Women's Championship shot in the near future. Now, Lara is making a return this evening. You know, she's been on the shelf for quite a while. She was injured a few months back when she was teaming, actually, with Barbara Gordon, who's the current Women's Champion. Oh god, big knee to the ribs there from Rosemary. So it's going to be interesting to see if Lara is out for vengeance or whether she actually just wants to win it for a friend. We don't know the current connection after the injuries. A scoop and a slam there from Rosemary. Big knee to the ribs. And the cutter. Rosemary had a hell of a showing recently in the PTW women's tag team division. And she's earned herself this opportunity here. Similar goes for Trish. Big forearm strike to the chin there. Go behind. Oh. Trish goes low and slaps Rosemary down. All three of these women jockeying for position here in the singles division. For well, the singles women's division, I should say. There is a women's tag team division as well. If you've not noticed, the main event this evening will be to crown the first PTW women's tag team champions. Big forearm to the chin there of Rosemary. A drop kick stops a suplex attempt. Thrown off the ropes and a dragon screw there from Lara. She's been working that pretty well so far this match. Rosemary now. Now gets caught again with another dragon screw. If you saw the last show, Rosemary accompanied Crazy Steve to ringside and Rosemary earned her paycheck that evening despite not actually being in the match. She was a major factor. There you go, Trish being dragged out to the centre of the ring. Lara drops her, but stops what she's doing. It's caught with another corner from Rosemary. Off the oh my god! <laughs> Trish was starting to go off the ropes to see what she was going for something against Lara, I think. And got caught with a spear. Got multiple slaps there from Trish. Just throw them into each other. Big DDT! That's obviously my, uh, my, co my co anchor is giving his opinion. My co-commentator, he's colour commentator, clearly. Yeah, that's that's his opinion on the matter. The, incom the incomparable Aussie. Either way, there was a crossfade attempt there from Rosemary. Didn't quite manage to get it locked in. Thrown into the corner now. My co anchor has now left the room. He's decided he didn't want any of this. Sharpshooter locked in now from Trish. Managed to escape it there. Forearm to the face. Rosemary drops it and then goes low. Rosemary, they're working on the legs. Oh, no, chokehold now locked in from Trish. Chokehold to Lara. Lara manages to escape it. Goes on attempt. Ducked. Got her up. Death Valley driver. Snap suplex though from Trish. This is first pinfall or submission gets the victory here. Multiple slaps again to the face and a chick kick. But she turns her attention to Lara and Bulldog. Smart move. Wasn't really going to be able to get the pin. Go behind and Trish goes low and works on the knees. Everyone's been working the knees of Rosemary here. Maybe they know something we don't. Brain Buster! <laughs> Out of nowhere! And again working the knee. That like Lara just sort of collapsed out of nowhere. Okay, she's alright, she's back to her feet, but gets caught with a choke slam. There was a sharpshooter attempt, or a scorpion death drop, I should say. Scorpion death drop, scorpion death lock. Nice, I'm not even sure what to call that, but I nearly got it. Nearly got the victory. Big clothesline. Up on the shoulders, there's a red wedding. But she gets caught, Trish, power bomb. Oh god, is that a cow mutilation? Like a sitting cow mutilation there. Another name for a move. Chokes so up, back into the scorpion. But no, gets dropped right, well, not dropped, but gets jabbed right in the face. Snap suplex there. What's she calling for? She's calling for a straight right, but to nobody. There might be a fourth person in this match, the invisible woman, clearly. Pile driver though from Trish, into a sharpshooter of her own. And it looks like Lara's just gonna let it happen. Interesting. 
Leash felt Rose Rose had done, but Death Valley Driver, she paid for it. Trisha's up top, what's she thinking? Diving crossbody, she got some distance on that. And almost got the victory. Good God, Bulldog the attempt to get us there from Trish. Gets caught. Red Wedding! Lara's right there to stop it. And gets caught, one of her own! <laughs> now Trish might go for another power bomb, dropping her down. Double team, double suplex attempt there. Landed it, Lara and Trish. But here we go, back and forth, kicks up the ribs from forearm to the face. Lara, big round out. Trish with the drop kick. Rosemary just standing watching, but gets caught with slaps to the face. She spun around and then piled her off Lara. That's one way to do it. Bulldog again from Trish. Back into the sharpshooter. He gets jabbed in the face multiple times. Lara moon stomp. The moon stomp, double foot stomp to the spine, but she gets caught. No, rolls through. Rope break. I think Rosemary was, uh, was lucky there. Lara with the super kick. Rosemary dropped her with the forearm. Rosemary's going up top. No, what's Rosemary thinking here? She's picking a spot. Oh, don't know what she went for, but it didn't land. What it might have been a diving DDT attempt, maybe. Whatever it is, she might have taken herself out. No, she kicks out there. Two count. Bulldog again from Trish. Looks like they've stopped working Rosemary's knees. One, two, two point nine again. So close. Rosemary didn't try and break that up. Interestingly. Gets caught with a snap suplex from Lara. Bang bang. Shouts out one of our tag team champions. Power bomb there. Oh god, no Rosemary blocks in the Scorpion Deathlock. And Trish decided to break that up quickly. Smart move, that could have been all she wrote. Check kick! But Rosemary just throws her away. Goes behind. Jones in the back of the head. I thought she might have been maybe going for the death drop, but no. Oh, up in the air, red wedding! Lara just points at the ref. Oh, a kick out from Trish. That was interesting. Was Lara giving the win there to Rosemary? Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe she just has faith that Trish was going to kick out. And a snap suplex there from Lara. Been an interesting move there. That Lara's been using the suplexes quite a lot in this match. Suplexes and dragon screws. Bulldog from Trish. She gets caught, put down PK, kick square to the chin. Super kick to Lara, drop kick attempt, but Trish gets out of the way. Oh, but she landed that one. Back of Lara's head. Off the row, speared again out, nearly out of her boots. Chick kick though for her troubles. And a brain buster from Lara. Reverse Rana, or poison Rana, whatever you want to call it. But look, it's caught back into the corner. All three women down. Bit of a reset there for a second. Oh god, I'm not quite sure who hit who there, but Lara's the only one standing. For a minute, but she gets caught with the chick kick. And Trish, oh no, Death Valley Driver. I thought she might be good for the Red Wedding. Power bomb again from Trish. Double team suplex. Drops Rosemary. Drop kick though, drops Lara. Trish has got her up. Trish power bomb. Oh, goes for another drop kick attempt but misses. Hooked up off the ropes they go. Up in the air. Red wedding. And she's not done. Pile driver to Trish. Jumping pile driver. But, but Lara brain buster to Rosemary. None of these women have even thought about exiting the ring it seems. Trish with the drop kick. And then slaps Rosemary in the face. Off the rope she goes. Oh, all three women down. We've got a reset. Rosemary the first to her feet. But she gets caught. Brain buster. Trish is there to meet Lara though. Pile driver. It's going to take a hell of a lot to put any one of these women down. Red Wedding. This is a hell of a match to come back to. Got super kick square under the chin. And up off the rope she goes. Slap to the face. Multiple slaps to the face. Caught again with that cutter. Stood back to her feet. Trish off the ropes. Forearm to the back of the head. Moore lock there for Rosemary. And that's it. Lara tapped out. Rosemary got the victory. Can't say she didn't earn it, but honestly, 
any of those women deserved that one. That was a hell of a contest and I think a hell of a return to form here for PTW after a week off. But well done Rosemary. 100% match rating. I'm not surprised the Mootalock does it. Rosemary moves on to take on the women's champion at a future event. Yet to be named. We still haven't named the future event. I probably should have while I've been away. But coming up next folks we are moving on to Batman's Crusade. As we know he's been taking on the brothers in paint. He faced Darby Allen last show and came up a little short, but this week he's got Finn Balor. Let's see if he can actually do better against Balor than he did against Darby. But there's only one way to find out and that match is coming up next. Here we go folks, match number two of the evening. The Dark Knight himself taking on the Demon King. Batman's crusade to get through all the brothers in paint in order to make his way to the Joker. Shock horror. Who'd have guessed, right? But he attempted that crusade to start with last week where he took on Darby Allen and came up just a little bit short against Darby. Somewhat surprisingly. But Darby pulled out all the stops in that one. He, Darby's walked away injured. Darby has walked away from that injured. He is not here this evening. His arm is in tatters. His shoulder was separated. He needs some time to recover. So, stepping up. The next member of the Brothers in Paint is the Demon King himself, the Irish Ace, Finn Balor. I know the Irish Ace is technically somebody else's nickname, but let's be honest, this is the Irish Ace. Let's see how Finn does against the Dark Knight. Maybe Batman's idea is not to actually win these matches. Maybe his idea is to injure his opponents, because like I said, he didn't beat Derby, but he did injure him. Roll through, drop kick to the face from Balor. Balor's going to have a speed advantage here. Without a stout, Balor's going to have a speed advantage, but Bats is going to have the power advantage and maybe the technique advantage as well. Certainly on submission game. Drag to the center, knee to the ribs, and again goes for another knee bar. Bats was going for the arm of Darby, it looks like he's going for the leg of Balor. Over arm to the face, more forearms from Balor. Go behind. Bats rolls through with another arm bar. Maybe not. Maybe he is going for the arms. Maybe just going for any appendage he can. Back fist to the back of the head. And another arm bar from Bats. Bats is trying to break it. As I said, he didn't manage to break uh, Darby's arm last week, but he separated his shoulder, so he didn't come far off. And again, a roll through to another arm bar from Bats. This seems to be a strategy of Bats. Take out the arms, take out the legs. Take out all the extremities. Big drop kick to the face and Bats is straight up. And gets caught with another forearm. Balor's landing more strikes. But Bats is landing more... More grapples, more, more submissions, more throws. So back up there, but caught. Caught! Interesting here how Balor's idea is to... Staying close with Bats. I thought that would be the worst idea. As we see by the amount of submission moves that Bats had himself caught in. Another drop kick to the face though. Those are slowly wearing down Bats. Slowly but surely. We could call the kick to the face. Bauer. Double undercut. But no gets back dropped. Nearly to the floor. Get to the face. Both men down for a second. Bauer back up to his feet. Drop kick attempt misses. Double underhook. Suplex drops the bat. Sits him back up, off the rope, drop kick. Balor's working those drop kicks, but Pats with a multiple strike combination into another armbar. Balor quickly trying to get to those ropes. Bats now with a neck lock again, Chancery. Oh, but Orican ran out of nowhere. Balor's going up, Balor's going up. Coup de grace already. Doesn't go for the pin. Interesting that he didn't go for the pin. He probably knows that that wasn't going to do it yet. Oh my god. Palo went for some sort of Death Valley driver or something, but Bats counted it into another armbar and then goes into a crossface. Bats with all the submission game here. Caught with the Hurricane Runner again. The neck lock there from Bala. No, Bats escapes. Pin, pin attempt one. But he might have knocked him out. Oh, caught, roll up. Too close to those ropes. Bala, 1916. Hit them on the 1916 on the bloody Sunday, depending on who you ask. But here's the cover. One, two. Kick out again from Bats. 
Roll through, double stomp to the ribs. So Ballard's starting to work that speed advantage now. Run, running drop kick there. John Woo drop kick style. And now into a Texas Cloverleaf. Or an Irish Cloverleaf, I suppose. Right there from Bats. Like I said the submission game is going to be Bats' game. Did you see that? Bats threw a kick. Ballard caught it. And Bats just rolled through into a knee bar. So always thinking. One step ahead almost all the time. Oh, God. Went for that, but missed. Ballard could have grabbed at the spine. Ballard might have this. Sits him up. Roll through. Another drop. Well, another double foot stop to the ribs. Ballard not going for pins, which is interesting. Oh, take down there from Bats. Takes a second to catch his breath. Oh, what's this? Drops himself to his back into another arm bar. Bats is determined to get those arms away from Ballard. Ballard does have a history of shoulder issues. He has separated his shoulder in the past. Took him out of action for a very long time. Sling blade there from Ballard. Let's move that. Uh, no, not from Ballard, from Bats. To Ballard. There's a move that Ballard actually normally does. Now another knee bar from Bats. Forearms to the face. Off the ropes he goes. Sling blade from Ballard. There we go. That's the one. One. Two. Two point nine. Oh, four off, caught him in the back of the head. Bats went down there. That caught him off guard. Stood up, off the ropes, he goes, clothesline. Stood up, roll through, into another stomp to the ribs, Ballard's going up. Double foot stomp, the coup de gras. Again, he doesn't pin him. He runs in for another sling blade. But Bats is back up. What the hell, oh god, Fisherman Brain Buster from Bats. That came out of nowhere. Back into another R bar. Back into another R bar. Can Ballard withstand it? Yes, he can. Just. Ballard's going for 1916. And he lands it. Drag him out. Cover attempt. One, two, three. Once again, the bat falls short. He's gone up against two members of the Bruins in pain, and he has fallen short of beating both of them. My God, where does the bat go from here? Where does he go from here? Look, at ninety percent match rating though, but the nineteen sixteen, the cross arm Norman lights bomb, as it is referred to there, put away the bat. So that is Darby and Finn who have both put down bats. You got to think that Bats is going to have to try again against those two, because I don't think he's going to get to either Sting or the Joker. Not yet, anyway. Not if he can't put away these two. But, ladies and gentlemen, we have another match coming up next. If you have been following PTW for a little bit of time, you might have seen that we have a bit of a feud building between uh, the seven foot four giant known as Andrew Everett and Decay. If you saw in the recent freeway contest for the light heavy, well, number one contendership for the junior heavyweight championship or light heavyweight championship, whatever you want to refer to it as, Andrew and Crazy Steve got into a bit of a bit of a heated, a uh, bit of a heated exchange, and they've been feuding ever since. But coming up next, Andrew Everett is going to be stepping into an environment he is not used to. He is going to be stepping into a death match environment, and he is going against. The Monster Abyss. Ladies and gentlemen, stay right where you are for that one. You don't want to miss it. It's coming up next. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Andrew Everett stepping into an environment that he is not used to. One that he is probably not comfortable with. But he wants to take on Decay. And he's going one-on-one -on -one with the Monster himself, Abyss. Look at this. Look at this environment. Look how we have set this stage up. How is Andrew Everett going to take out Abyss? It is not going to be an easy one. But he is going to try. He got himself in way over his head when he stepped in there with the uh, with Decay and he started getting on their bad side. But if Andrew Everett gets through this, he moves on next week to take on Decay in another tag team com competition. Where he's got himself a partner. We'll see who that partner is next week. But if in order to get there first. He has to survive Abyss tonight. And that is not going to be easy. Not in Abyss's environment. This is something that Abyss is very comfortable with on this stage. 
So if this has been a million times, and he'll happily go a million more. Maybe you can't say the same for old Andy. But big clubby blow there from the monster, but the super kick from Everett drops him, and he goes for a spinning toe hold. Shouts out Terry Funk. Hold up there, forearms to the face from Everett. Oh, but flurrying into those light tubes in the corner. You saw him explode, but Andy stayed on his feet. He's dropped now, taking a breath. Abyss, though. Oh, backbreaker, or rib breaker, whatever you want to refer to it. Either or, to be honest, it broke something. Shot to the ribs, and throw to the floor in the exploding landmines. Good God. The barbed wire, the landmine boards, Everett's bleeding. Bleed badly as well, but he hits a buzzsaw kick. Shouts out our current number one contender, Tajiri. Got thrown back into those light tubes. Abyss is just throwing Andy everywhere and destroying him. Big jokes, I'm onto a chair. Andy might be done already, but no. No, we gotta just get a rope break. Shockingly, we have rope breaks in this environment. <laughs> there have to be some rules. Big spinning back heel kick. Cover one, two. Kick out straight away from Abyss there. Roll through again, one, two. No, not even a two count that time. But another buzzsaw kick drops Abyss down. And Andy's got a light tube. Shot to the ribs, swing and a miss though that time. And Abyss is just marching him down. And he's been using that buzzsaw kick to great effect. Working on the knees now. Kick down. Oh, kendo stick to the ribs. More forearms. Andy off the ropes. Big running drop kick drops Abyss. Andy's bleeding everywhere. Wait, choke slam. Choke slam from Andy. One, two. Just a two count. Everett. Code breaker there from Everett. And a car onto the chair. This environment very limits, well, very much limits Everett because he's known for flying around. Oh god, shock treatment backbreaker. <laughs> like Kobe Oji wrote. Oh god. But no, he's up. He's up somehow. And a cutter. Everett is known for flying around the ring. He's known for bouncing off the ropes, going off the top, but this environment somewhat limits him for that. But he's handing in there. Handing in there? Hanging in there. Easy for me to say. Took out the knee of the monster. Oh god. Just elevated in the air with a choke hold. Nearly 10.31. Went for a chop to the chest, didn't land it. Gets caught. Running power slam from Abyss. I've been dragged out to the center of the ring and stood up. As he's being a super kick to the chin. And he's firing up. And a big roundhouse kick. Drops him down. And a kendo to the head. And he's starting to fire up now. Another. Oh, so he's noticed that that's working, so he keeps doing it. Oh God, but Abyss just runs him down. And Abyss has got a light tube in his hand now. Nope, Don't just throws Andy back out into the explosions. Good God. Andy somehow is up. Everett's back in the ring. And back down on the ground again. Oh, but Abyss now thrown into the barbed wire, not into the barbed wire, into the light tubes. But that's the barbed wire bat. Abyss appears to be bleeding now. Both men busted open. Back and forth we go. Kicks to the ribs, shots to the head. Big super kick from Andy. He's actually started to build some momentum. Oh, God. For a second. Oh, <laughs> nearly thrown to the floor. Abyss was generous there. No, I say generous, he just clocks him in the head with a chair. The kendo stick and a shot to the ribs. It's going to be back up. Roll through. How do I have it? No. Too close to those ropes. I've got the ropes to go. And another running drop kick from Andy. Andrew's really starting to build some momentum now and throws a bit back into those light tubes. Stands him up. What's he thinking? Off the ropes. Oh, they collide. But heads, but Abyss is straight back up. Abyss might be bleeding. Oh, God. Yeah, I think you might be right, Abyss. That might be all she wrote. Base pull back to the head, then to the ribs, then again to the ribs. This is starting to become uncomfortable. This is like gang style beatdown. Good God. Abyss, have some mercy on him. Or oh, don't. Black hole slam. One, 
two. Thanks for coming, Andy. That just got brutal at the end. The baseball bat beat down off the ropes. Black hole slam. That was all she wrote. Good night, Andy E. I mean, it was an impressive showing. It was an impressive showing, but one on one with the Monster Abyss was clearly not the move for Andrew Everett. He was not able to put him away. We'll see next week if he has any better luck in the tag team competition. But before we get there, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, the man himself is back. John Moxley has returned to PTW and he is coming out to the ring next. It's going to be interesting to see who steps up to him. He says he's got an open challenge. We'll see who accepts it. Ladies and gentlemen, wait right where you are for that one. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. He's back. The man, the myth, the legend himself, John Moxley, is back here in PTW. He's been away for quite a while since he lost the Hardcore Championship to Rancid Adam. He stepped away for a while to recover, to catch his, uh, catch his breath. And now he's back. And he's back in normal singles division. Wanting to make an impact here. And he is challenging anybody in the back to a contest. He said anyone. Open challenge. Who's accepted? Interesting. A man that Moxley has a lot of history with, ladies and gentlemen, it is Seth Rollins, the Messiah as he calls himself, the Monday Night Messiah, even though these come out on a Tuesday. Tuesday Night Messiah, does that work as well? Maybe not. He's had many nicknames, but he's also been the best of friends with Moxley and the worst of enemies. These two men know each other incredibly well, and it's a hell of a return competition here for Moxley. And I believe singles debut for Rollins here. Seth has been in PTW, but only in tag team competition. Funnily enough, when he was teaming with Moxley, I believe, and Reigns in the trios tournament, reuniting the Shield. But this is his first taste of singles competition, I believe. And a running Hurricane Rana. Takes down Moxley. So the forearm to the face and a poke to the eye. And back and forth they go. Moxley dropped down with that forearm. I say these two, it's not going to be a lot of feeling out process because they know each other incredibly well inside and out. This is probably going to be 100 mile now for the get go and a jumping knee from Rollins. And a knee drop there. And Moxley pulls out a fork. Bust Rollins open already. We're two and a half minutes into this match and Rollins is bleeding. Off the ropes goes Mark sliding clothesline. Shot there, drop kick, both men down. Both got up at the exact same time. Wait, pedigree. Pedigree for Rollins. And a curb stomp. One, two. A kick out already. Rollins went for the curb stomp so early on. Pedigree into a curb stomp. Like I said, no messing around. Now into an STF. Mox is able to escape it. And here we go, forearm for forearm, back and forth they go. Mox gets the better of that exchange. Mox is going to have a bit of an advantage when it comes to power and brawling. But an elbow drop there, and then just bounce him. Look at the blood on the map, my god. Throw into the corner again. Mox follows him in, goes for a forearm, but Rollins gets out of the way. Poke to the eye. Cross face there from Moxley. Right in the ropes, you saw the panic in Seth's eyes. Seth Falcon's arrow. He did the deal. Two. Just a two count. Jumping headbutt. Mox again. Not necessarily the best strategician. Stra strategician? In fact, that's not even the word. I can't say that word. I've just discovered a word I cannot say. He's not the best when it comes to strategy. That's the way I'll word it. But Rollins. Spinning frog splash. One. Two. Almost got Mox there. He almost put him away. Go for another pedigree. Into another curb stomp. He seems to like that combination. So hell of a combination. One. Two. 2.9 and Mox is able to kick out. Close line attempt. Doesn't land it. Jumping headbutt does land though. To back up. Off the ropes. Big crossbody in the cover. One. Two. Okay, just, a two uh, just a two count. 
That drops him out there to Seth. Seth up top. Spinning frog splash again. He got a full 180 on that one. And a 2.9. But oh my god. Rollins was mid-air for an Integuri. And marks the corner with the corner. Sands him up and hits him with another one. The MOX. And then the pile driver. One. Two. And the kick out there for Rollins. So these men know each other incredibly well. So they're having to pull out stops they don't usually do. Lux was too close to those ropes there. Went for the cover again. Didn't land it. Seth throws him off the ropes. Spikes him with a pile driver. Seth calling for something. Back with that spinning frog splash again. He's been throwing that a lot. Pile driver again from Mox. Cover. One. Two. Seth kicks out. Caught into a cross face. No, he manages to catch her into the ropes there. But Mox goes for it again. You see the panic in Seth's eyes when he gets caught with that. But oh, pedigree. Curb stomp. No, he goes for it straight for the pin, straight after it. Two. 2.9. He didn't go for the curb stomp. That might have been the mistake. Might be going for the Kingslayer knee there, but he didn't manage to get it. Mox goes behind into a bulldog. Both men down. Seth actually got to his feet first. Falcon's arrow. Very close to those ropes, so Mox's feet were on the ropes. God, oh god, Mishinoku driver. And a super kick. Seth throwing everything at him. Go behind. Ropes running Rana sends Mox to the floor. And Mox has got a chair. Still can't get rid of those hardcore roots. Drops him down. Mox cracks the neck. Caught cross face. Center of the ring. He's not gone for the uh, for the paradigm shift or the death rider just yet. He's saving those it seems. The ropes into a boss man slam. Mox is feeling it. So, oh no, Rollins comes back with his forearms. So, now the back and forth. Seth, big into Gary, but Mox is straight up into a close line. God, he throws those lariats hard. Seth, big strike combination, drops him with the knees. Curb stomp! And cover, could that be all? She, no, it is! Moxley's big return, spoiled by a former rival and a former friend, Seth Rollins. Comes out here and puts an end to Moxley's big return. Good God. That was impressive though, that was a hell of a match. 93% I feel that was it undersold. That's been undersold. Whoever rated that one. Underselling it. Underselling the match. I thought that was fantastic. But ladies and gentlemen. We have one more match this evening. We have got to crown ourselves. New women's tag team champions. Liv Morgan and B Priestley. Taking on Ruby Riot and Sarah Logan. Main event. Coming up next. Wait right where you are for that one. And it's main event time, everybody. One more match this evening for our return show. And we are crowning our first PTW Women's Tag Team Champions. Introducing the first team, the team of Liv Morgan and B Priestley. These two found themselves in a somewhat strange alliance recently. But it's worked out for the both of them by the fact they've, they've got here. They weren't really working things out in terms of singles competition. So they formed this unit. And sort of the formation of this unit is what sparked the tag team division here. So what brought this out. But they're going up against two women who Liv, uh, at least, is very familiar with. Former stablemates. The Riot Squad, Sarah Logan and Ruby Riot, a.k.a. Ruby Soho. We're going to call her Ruby Riot for this one because it's part of the Riot Squad. Ref calls for the bell and here we go. And a scoop and a slam straight away from Liv. Stands her up. Nice, into a triangle choke to start things off. These two very, very close friends. Ruby and Liv known each other for a long time. Ruby sort of took Liv under her wing. Now this sort of broke out somewhat on her own. Even though she's formed another team now. But it is away from Ruby. Though Ruby and Sarah had an 
incredible match to earn their way into this title shot. Going up against uh, China and Jacqueline. Scoping a slam there from Ruby. Ruby trying to handle this on her own for the moment, but she's outnumbered in that corner. And she's throwing scoop slams to get out and tags in Sarah. Here comes the powerhouse of the team. Sarah taller than uh, B there. Taller than B, stronger than B. B's going to have to really come out of this with... She's going to have to start throwing some speed into there because she's not really doing that at the moment. She's going to take down. Nice roll for into an arm bar. Don't really quite know how she managed to land through that. There's a lot of rolls there I didn't quite manage to catch up with. To defeat Sarah on her own in the opposite team's corner. And a head pounded onto the ground there. Forearm strikes to the face and a shoot takedown. But Liv catches it. Trapped the arm and the neck. Sarah managed to power out of it though. That's the game that Sarah's going to have to use a lot of in this. Multiple head puts her. Drops Liv and a chin lock there. Even though she's no longer legal. Ruby's the legal woman. Drop down. Tag back into B. Oh nice. Was that a super kick or a side kick? Whatever it was, it was effective. And <laughs> Liv again just pounding the head on the ground. Oh, well, suplex attempt was reversed. Off the ropes. Both women hold on. And again this time, runs into a runner. Went for a pin and B was out of it very quickly. Off the ropes. Side kick again from B. Twist in the head. Very unnatural angle for that to be at there. Scooping the slam. Dragon screw to the leg. Where else do you do the dragon screw? I don't know. I don't think you can dragon screw an arm. Over B. Nice repeated elbows on forearms to the back of Sarah's head there. And a chop nearly takes her out. She was still on her feet. Modified scoop slam, but gets caught again yeah, with that chop. Yeah. Hooked up and dragged out to the center, but lives the legal woman. Sarah, though, kicking both of them down. She don't care. She'll fight them all. She'll fight the referee. Liv is working a submission game incredibly well here. That's something that she's come on leaps and bounds with. And her agility just getting out of the way of both her former stable mates for a second. Gets caught into a backdrop. When Ruby tried to take advantage, she got caught into a submission. Liv's defense game is on point tonight, it seems. Here they go, strike to strike, they go. Liv, though, managing to push Ruby back into her own corner. God, you heard that shout. Yeah. Suplex there from B. Sands are up. Now Ruby recounters it. Recounters it. It's halfway through to the reverse line of counter. A recounter. Should be what we start calling reversals into reversals. Recounters. Yeah. In. Sarah's legal. Super kick caught Ruby in the chin. <laughs> oh, Sarah's smart there. She Waited. She saw B was up top. Decided not to close that gap. Multiple headbutts now though from Sarah. Dropping Ruby down. Not Ruby down. B down. So many people are getting names confused. This is hard work. You know. Attack attack. All four women in the ring now currently. Who's going to gain the advantage here? It looks like Ruby's the last one standing. Went for an Inzagiri attempt, doesn't land it. Scoops on Lanzo, cover. Just a one count. Lives out straight away. Suplex to back down to the ground now. Ruby tries to mount to go for some more offense, but gets caught again into that submission. Lives prepared. I suppose if anyone's going to know this team, it is going to be Liv. She's going to know them like the back of her hand. She'll know what they're going to do and when they're going to do it, probably before they do. Nice suplex there though from Ruby. And she does another one. Drops both members of the team to the ground. Another meeting of the minds there. Double drop kick. Ruining the business. And a running knee to the face. Right, it's got trying to gain some sort of momentum there, but B just zoned him. 
managed to tag in Liv. Oh, Liv went to try and stop Sarah there. Sarah got out of the way, but the curb breaker. One, two. Oh, Ruby just had to break it. B put herself in between. Still didn't quite work. B's all up top. Sides against it. The ropes. Oh, God. That was kind of like a Samoan drop, but not quite. Whatever it was, it was effective. Tag to tag. B and Ruby illegal. Double battle bomb. Roll through for Ruby. One, two. Almost had it. They're almost the inaugural women's champions here. One, two. Get another kick out. Shining wizard attempt there from Liv. And Beal out of the corner for B. Beal for B. Roll through. One, two. Just a two count. Go behind. Backdrop driver from Sarah. Snap suplex from Ruby. All four women in the ring. Can't wait. B. Counters it. B. Queen's landing. Queen's landing. One, two. Oh, if Sarah wasn't there, that surely would have been it. Drop driver from Liv, but a roll through from Ruby. Oh, 2.9 and B just kicked out of it. Tag into Liv. He's on the ropes, running kick to the face. Oh, but counted. It's Liv thinking Liv's up top. Double foot stomp. Drags her out to the centre, though. More towards the centre. Reversal. Forearm to the back of the head. Sends her back up. The ropes they go. Pop up power bomb sit out style too. B is just there to break that. Oh, brutal. Oh, octopus hold from Liv. But Ruby's up top now. Diving was that a, was that a headbutt? Splash, I'm not quite sure. That was a headbutt. Oh god, just chopped in the ear. Oh, the headbutt to the back of the head. And a big boy sent on. Sarah's off the ropes, knee drops to the spine. Lives in trouble here. Lives in trouble. Sarah says bring it. Into the corner we go. Liv fights out, tags in B. Liv ramming the head down on the ground now. Repeatedly, God, that was brutal. Elbow strike, go behind. Oh, caught with the knee. Sarah's feeling it. Sends her back up. Another headbutt from Sarah. Tags back into Ruby. Tag back into Liv. <laughs> Everyone's throwing forearms. Oh god, kicks to the jaw from Liv. Multiple. Back and forth they go. Back and forth. Ruby and Liv. Super kick for Ruby. Drop kick from Liv. These women just can't seem to keep the other down. Just punch to the face. Takes out the knee. And there's a move that Liv's been using quite a lot. Oh, but caught. B caught her. B just caught Ruby. And a jumping face buster. He's not got caught into a DDT. Thrown out of the ring. Doesn't follow up. B, though, got straight in there. Says she's not going to get a chance to catch her breath. But a rolling wheel kick from Ruby. Sands her up. Sidewalk slam. Got her up again. Ruby's building momentum now. Tags into Sarah. Kick to the spine. Good God. They got him up. Sarah double underhook into a suplex. The right squad have really got Liv isolated right now. Another headbutt. They're building a lot of momentum, beating down on Liv. Oh, but code breaker out of nowhere. We've got the code breaker out of nowhere. And a pin. One, two. 2.9. Sarah just kicked out of it. It was in the exact right spot that Liv wanted it to be in as well. Ruby was not able to make it in time to break it up. Sarah did have to kick out. Jumping face was her attempt. Didn't quite land it. Oh, God! Code breaker! Code breaker knocked Ruby out cold. Liv just knocked Ruby out cold. Oh, and a really big trigger. Just for good measure to drop Sarah. Who is not happy. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. Our inaugural women's tag team champions. Liv Morgan, B Priestley, Liv knocked out Ruby. 
She knocked her out cold with that code breaker. And then just to follow up, B just decided to drop Sarah with a B trigger. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this evening. Thank you so much for joining me. It feels good to be back. I have missed doing this. It's been a genuine pleasure, as per usual. Like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill, all the fun stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!